We now look at the descendants of those black slaves and red masters and what they're doing today. We start at what was great grandpa Harry Ford's homestead in Creek Country. Home now of the Dean family, the owner Herman Dean, one of about 10 black farmers still left in the area. Another was his brother-in-law, 66-year-old Sherd Parker, the former sheriff of Wagner County, Oklahoma, still living on the allotment his family received from the Creek tribe. Sherd mainly raises cattle. He says he stayed in farming while others have gotten out because of his dad. He always told us kids, if you take care of the farm, the farm will take care of you. We went to the old Cherokee capital of Tahlequah, where the local bank displays its name in both English and Cherokee. I wanted to hear the language spoken, so my cousin, Maurice Shepard, stopped a buddy on the street. Hello, Phil. How are you? You all right? <laughs> his name is Walter Whitekiller, which means one of his ancestors killed a white person. There are also Cherokees named Mankiller, Sixkiller, and Tenkiller. We dropped by a meeting of the five civilized tribes and found most tribes have kicked the blacks out. That was uh, one of the things that the Creek people wanted to do was to get it back to where that uh, the uh, Muscogee Creek Indians would have full control. The chief says there were no major complaints, but when the Cherokees did the same thing, 92-year-old Roger Nero filed a lawsuit. And they just re rejected us. Chief Wilma Mankiller says she sympathizes that it was not her decision, but... My job now is to uphold the Constitution. In the federal lawsuit and appeal, the Cherokees won. But among the Seminoles, the historically close relations between black and red have not changed. Uh, have, we have 12 Indian bands and the two Freedmen bands. Lawrence Cudjo, head of the Bruner Band, says it's because Seminoles and their slaves fought together against the U.S. Army. Our forefathers, they died together. Uh, and and, 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 the, and, the, and the, the help that the Freedmen gave the, the Seminoles, the Indians, was so, they made a blood treaty that they, as long as the water flows and the, and the oak tree grows, that they would be a part of that nation. They were just that close. Near Muskogee, we met 76-year-old Napoleon Davis, whose grandparents were slaves of the Creeks. He's a retired carpenter who's building this. Well, I'm trying to build a shrine. They call Oklahoma Creek Treatment Shrine. Mm -hmm. Ded dedicated to the memory of the Creek Treatment. He hopes descendants of Indian slaves will come here to share and record much of the oral history that is so rapidly dying out. We seem like we are people that sit down and wait for other people to write our history, and it's not good. He says he doesn't know if he'll be healthy enough or live long enough to finish his shrine, but he says his three children have promised if he doesn't finish it, they will. Get your pencils ready if you want more information about Black Slaves, Red Masters. If you would like a book list on this subject, you can write to Judy Lipner, Greenwood Press, 51 Riverside Avenue, Westport, Connecticut, 08860, or call her at 203-226-3571. We leave you today back in Oklahoma with Napoleon Davis, his shrine, and his thoughts. I'm Sam Ford. I'm trying my best to say something that they couldn't say or didn't say, something that they might want to say and couldn't say. So, so that's that's what is what is all about. There's one kind of favor I ask for you.